it was a whole lot of fun during the combine. You know, I was kind of working my ass off between the lives, and I was I was also I streamed the combine, but on top of that, I was also doing all these friggin' player evaluations. Kind of got a little crazy, and I think it kind of hurts my views a little bit because it kind of spreads them out. Where I could have you know kind of spread these guys out over over until the combine. I mean, until the actual draft. So I think you're gonna see me kind of relax on some of these players. Like maybe do like one a day, maybe uh maybe one and a half a day. So I end up doing three like three every two days but nonetheless uh yeah Ladin Conkney uh looked real good at the combine uh, I, I got his combine numbers could pull them up later but uh to start we'll just we'll watch him first um kind of don't like looking at the combine numbers before I watch him I already know he ran a 439 but you know it's kind of that revisionist history where it's like I don't know if I'd actually give this guy you know such and such grade and you're supposed to obviously you know evaluate them based on what you see on the field and you kind of get too caught up uh, in what they do in in underwear so yeah without further ado I'll, I'll just get right into it all right so like i said i wish i didn't know he ran a 439 because i'd probably call him slow just like i did xavier worthy but this is like one of those guys that when you first start thinking about him you don't really think they're gonna do that much in the nfl like i hate to say it i was thinking more of a you know dude that's awesome in college doesn't do much at the next level but by all intents and purposes and all accounts not intensive purposes, but all accounts, like, this guy's got a legitimate shot to be a real NFL receiver. Like, I've heard some people talking about him day one. I don't know if he, you know, just taking a look at him, he's, he's real undersized. He doesn't have a look, the look of a first-round receiver to me, but in terms of his shiftiness and see how he just broke off that route right there, is, you know, his route running is real good. Um, I hate saying route running. I, I'm looking for more change of direction, that kind of stuff, so... We're still trying to gauge his athleticism. Um, not going to worry about his long speed so much since we know he's we know he's fast. But is he quick? And he looks quick so far. You know, how does he change direction? How does he run routes? What does he do with the ball in his hands? How are his ball skills? You know, you're not expecting this guy to be a great, uh, obviously contested catcher, but nonetheless, these are the questions we must ask ourselves. So I think his movement skills come real easy. Like, you'll just see him, you know, break that route off, and it's on a, you know, drop of a dime. You see he's real shifty with the ball in his hands. He's got some pickup also. Like, take a look. He's, you know, stopped right here, and then just watch how he accelerates. It's really more burst than it is acceleration, but... No, he's he's fast. They love those stop routes, those those whips. Not really a whip, but that stick route. It's like the sixth one I've seen. See him take the top off again. Like I said, I'm not worried about the long speed because he ran a four three nine, but I want to see it show up on, on tape. But you can see he's got real, real good burst. You know, if he had another two three inches to him, this guy's a first rounder, no doubt. But he's working with a smaller frame here.
right, so I think I've seen about about all that we're gonna see here out of Lad. Um, there's one more play left. I should have just let it run, but yeah, just to get to the the Excel here, I'll pull it up. Um, see exactly what he's listed at before I call him small. He's listed at so he's six foot one eighty six. You know, naturally that's just a small frame. Uh, I'd say that's below average. Um. Those are the ones that you start worrying about how they hold up, you know, against NFL hits. Now, he seems like savvy enough to kind of avoid those big hits. Like, I saw somebody on my stream this weekend was was complaining about, like, let's just say Marvin Harrison, that, you know, he doesn't like contact. Well, for a receiver, I don't think that's so bad of a thing. Like, you talk about these receivers and their builds, they're, they're a bit more longer than they are stout. Like, running backs are more stout. And if you got a running back that doesn't like contact, you know, that's guys, you got some serious issues with that. But for receiver, I almost I see it more as a virtue than it is a than it is something to hold against them because you know they're playing the long game. There's not you need if it's to the point where a guy's sliding every time you know he's about to get hit, you know then it's a problem. But you know there's just some guys that are more savvy in, in how they they can avoid taking those avoid taking those unnecessary hits. You know, sort of like a quarterback. Like you would never say that you dislike a quarterback because he's afraid of of contact you'd honestly say you like him because of that so i almost think that's something that people i don't think that's something that you should really hold against a receiver but long story short i'll give him a five for the change of direction it's probably a six but otherwise i'm gonna give him too high of a grade uh, his ball skills like i i typically when i think of ball skills like I, I wrap hands into it but it's also you know at the catch point how physical he is i don't want to dock points here for him because i'm already taking away the points from frame and that's kind of what's holding him back in that. I might, I'm going to give him a six on this. I just don't want to grade him. I don't want him to grade out higher than like, just like insane. So I'm going to give him a three on the ball skills. Yeah. He's got good hands, you know, just watching him through the combine. He's got, he's got easy hands, right? Like that's what they say is easy hands. So uh, his long speed at a four, three, nine, is that a six? Is it a five? I'm going to give him a five and short area quickness looks really good. So, I mean, he just graded out real high. Um, I think the frame concerns are legitimate and I understand why people would hold that against him. Him being only six foot. We can get rid of this here in a second. So we'll put him in. Um, like I said, that's going to give him a first round grade. I don't think he ends up going in the first round just because of his smaller frame. Like that's that's way higher than AD Mitchell. I don't know how much. I don't think he's that much better than AD Mitchell. If he is better than AD Mitchell, but um, yeah, that's that's all right. Uh, yeah, he's a real good player. Uh, again, like I'm kind of surprised that this was when I first heard. You know, I've known who Laddie McCockney is obviously because he's been a you know real good part of one of the better teams in the country, real big part of one of the better teams in the country, and you know you're familiar with his name but that's never a guy that like just looking at him right just looking at his size just watching the games live you never think nfl with that kind of guy but you know you watch the tape and he's real quick and you know him running a 439 obviously isn't gonna hurt uh just looking at some of his other combine numbers i'm curious to see how he jumped if he did jump um yeah his arm length graded out about to what you'd expect for a six footer uh jump 36 inches vertical 124 broad that's pretty good um not like elite level right like when i when i think elite level vert i usually think 40 i don't know if that's if that's right or wrong but that's just how i think um uh yeah he's he's a good player let me do now that we got all the numbers in we can uh you know kind of compare him here so just to see uh, what he's at in the percentile like you can see he's, he's real low for height and weight um especially weight but uh arm length real bad at 30 and a quarter you know just taking a look at his physical stuff it's it's really not really not it's about what you'd expect looking at it you know in the lower just looking at him in, on tape you know uh, but when you get to the athletic stuff, really not all that impressive besides the 40. I'm surprised that 36 vert, it's only 47 percentile for receivers. But, you know, yeah, he ran a real good, real good 40 time. And if he would have done the three cone of the shuttle, I bet it would have been pretty good as well. So just looking at uh, some of the comparisons he gets. Um, Dane Jackson, random name for uh, physical than athletic. He got Pierre Strong in the combo. He got Pierre um, Dane Jackson again. But just looking at some of these other names here, I mean, not really NFL names, you know, like, yeah, they said they said he was real close to Garrett Wilson. For whatever reason, he just came up as seventh on mine. Yeah, his numbers did look close to Garrett Wilson's, but that's what I, I, I always figured that they were bullshitting with these comparisons. 
like because every time it's a guy that you've heard of is number one but you know you'll get these other guys he's, he's a bit closer to them i guess but i bet you yeah so that's what i came up with look at the athletic garrett wilson showed up again you know so that's a name that you get excited about um I don't think he's quite as like slippery as, as Garrett Wilson, but he's a good player for sure. Um, again, you don't treat these don't treat these combine numbers as viable, but uh, yeah, he looked good. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys have any uh, recommendations for the next player, if you guys have any uh, disagreements about Lab McCockney, please let me know.